coming in. So after a while, Good morning to all the participants to the one year uh, GSCM webinar. We will just wait for three, four minutes so that others can join. So hello, welcome to all the participants here in the webinar of IIM Udaipur's one year uh, program in global supply chain management. I am Dipanita Adhikari. I'm a student of the current batch of GSCM. Here we have Professor Rajesh Agrawal who, and Professor Chandra Shekhar here with us. We have Tanu Bhatt ma'am from the admissions team as well. Professor Agrawal is currently the chairperson of one year MBA at IIM Udaipur and Professor Chandrasekhar is in charge for Center of Excellence at IIM Udaipur. Now I would like to hand over to Professor Agrawal and re request him to walk us through the GSCM program structure and design. Thank you very much, uh, Dipanita, and a very warm welcome to all the participants, all the aspirants uh, who have joined this morning to attend this webinar. And I'm going to take uh, a few minutes to give you an overview about the program before Mr. Chandrasekhar talks to you more about the Center on Global Supply Chain Management that we have. Next slide, please. So as an aspirant of an MBA program in Global Supply Chain Management, the very first question that should come to your mind is why should I consider I am Udaipur as an institution for my prospective MBA, and why should I consider a global supply chain management program uh, to attend? And these two are very important questions. And on that context, I would like to mention that this MBA program in global supply chain management, we believe is a unique MBA program. The reason why we believe it's a unique MBA program is twofold. The first is, like any other high quality management program, this program also gives you the opportunity to learn the management fundamentals across variety of functional areas, such as finance, human resource management, marketing, and things like that. As well as <clears throat> it gives you a great opportunity to understand the entire domain of supply chain management. And what is important is that both these things, which is your understanding of the management fundamentals 
as well as understanding the global supply chain management context is both available in one program. I don't have to mention to you the importance of the supply chain management as a domain, which has always been important and more so post pandemic, this has assumed a great significance. The next thing that you must consider is that, you know, where you aspire to do your MBA from has to be a leading academic institution. And we believe that I am Udaipur in a span of 11 years has made its mark in the name of management institutions, not only within the country, but globally. I will talk more about it in a moment from now. But what makes this program a very unique program <clears throat> is because this program is heavily industry-oriented program. What do I mean by industry-oriented program? That in the design of the program, as well as in the delivery of the program, as well as in the project component of the program that you shall do, there is a very heavy industry orientation or industry engagement. Uh, so what do I mean by industry engagement is that professionals, very senior professionals from the supply chain industry are involved in helping us design the program. Industry professionals also come over and participate as faculty members in teaching in this program. And then they help guide you in, in your projects when you do projects under this program. And finally, of course, uh, in the placement. So all that put together, we believe makes it a very real life oriented program and industry oriented program. Next slide, please. It's a 12 month full-time program for professionals who are already experienced. It's an established program because the first batch is started as early as 2013. Currently the 10th batch is in progress and this program has over 166 alumni spread in India as well as globally. In the initial stages of the program, we were consciously you know, taking very few students on board so that we wanted to make sure that whosoever joins the program gets a decent placement. And that's the reason the batch size has been smaller in the past. Currently, the batch size is approximately 50, and we expect that the batch side would be somewhat bigger than this in the coming year. Next slide. Now, I was talking to you a while ago about as an aspirant of an MBA program, it's very important for you to make sure that you are joining an institution which has credibility and quality. Now, what is the measure of credibility and quality is the ranking, particularly international ranking. When it comes to international ranking, there are two rankings globally, which are very prestigious. One of them is called Financial Times Global Ranking. The other is called QS World University Ranking. And I want to say this here, that there are only three IAMs in the country, which are present in these three rankings consecutively for three years. So while there are other IMs which come and go in this ranking, they're not stable. There are only three IMs which are there in these rankings consecutively for three years and which are I am Ahmedabad, I am Bangalore and I am Udaipur. So I think after I say this, I don't have to talk more about ranking. This talks about our consistency in being present in this globally valuable ranking. Now, what is the meaning of the ranking is this? that it tells you that whatever we do, we do with the orientation of providing a very high quality experience. It talks about the quality of the program, the design of the program and the delivery of the program. Next uh, slide, please. You can see on your screen what we call AACSB accreditation. This is a most prestigious global accreditation I am Udaipur is one of the fastest in the world to get this accreditation. You know, it's not very easy for institution as young as I am Udaipur to get this recognition. And to tell you one thing more about it is that there are only 5% business schools in the world have this recognition. 95% of the business schools don't have this accreditation. And I am Udaipur is one of those business schools which has this accreditation. 
So why I'm talking to you about all this is to say that the program design and delivery is of highest standard, which is recognized globally by these ranking and accreditation institutions. Next slide, please. To briefly talk to you about the program structure, once you finish this degree, the program here, you shall get an MBA degree in global supply chain management. It's a one year full-time program, right? Uh, you have to be present here. In fact, once you're working, you have to resign from your jobs and join here full-time. This program is going to be on campus. It's a residential program. There is an asterisk there to tell you that we all are aware about the situation of pandemic. We hope that you know the pandemic is not going to be there at that point in time. But should there be some problem, we'll have to move online. Otherwise, if all goes well, like the current batch, we shall have the program on campus, residential program. To be able to apply in this program, you have to have 36 months of full-time work experience after your graduation. And to be eligible to apply in this program, you have to have a valid GRE score or a GMAT score or a CAT score. You can apply with any of these three scores. And of course, you have to have three years of university education uh, full-time uh, to be able to apply. There's one common question that most of you have is about what is the cutoff, minimum cutoff that you should have to be able to apply and succeed in getting admission in this program. I would like to clarify by saying we do not have a specific cutoff in mind, right? There is no specific cutoff in mind. When we evaluate your application, we evaluate your application in totality. We look at your performance, academic performance in your undergrad, we look at your quality of experience, years of experience, and your performance in the GRE, GMAT, or CAT, and add all this put together, then we decide who should be you know, invited to attend the interview and who should not. So this is what I would like to mention right here so that you don't have to ask those questions about cutoff. Next slide, please. Talking about the GSCM course structure, as you can see, the very first vertical is called business management fundamentals. Unless we teach you about business management fundamentals, it cannot be called an MBA degree. You'd agree with me. So you need to understand the core management fundamentals, such as accounting, finance, statistics, production management, strategy, marketing, a whole host of core management courses. And then, in term two, you start learning about the supply chain management courses. And while you are understanding supply chain management courses, your understanding of the core management subjects also are helpful. And while you are in this term itself, you start doing something called projects. As you can see, last but one bullet, projects. Projects is where you get the opportunity to apply whatever you have learned in the classroom in real life situation. And that's the life project. The life project continues in the term three. So what do you do in term three? Term three also gives you opportunity to learn integrative elective courses that you do with the two year MBA graduates together. You attend elective courses of your choice. There are some approximately 15 to 20 elective courses and you choose the courses that you like and you attend those courses. So this is the overall program structure. Next slide, please. So because supply chain management is an extremely important area for the institution, the Institute has set up a center for global supply chain management, which is currently headed by Mr. Chandrasekhar. And he comes with decades of industry experience in supply chain management. So he heads the center and he will talk to you briefly more about the center and the relationship of the center with the program. So over to you, Mr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you, Rajesh, uh, and good morning all. A very warm welcome to you on the eve of our 75th anniversary of independence. India is an aspirational country and uh, your generation of people has a major role to play in taking the country to the heights that we believe we should be occupying. 
and iim udaipur wants to play a role in developing people like you to take on positions of importance with specific regard to the supply chain management area the center was set up in 2019 now professor rajesh said that our program one of the uh, you know major features of our program is that it is very industry oriented and the role of the center in the program is to facilitate this interaction with industry in various aspects of the program now all of you agree that we live in a very dynamic world in general and a very very fast evolving world in the supply chain space so it is therefore incumbent on us to ensure that our curriculum meets the expectations of industry so that is an area where we encourage industry to participate in the development of the curriculum so that our people meet the aspirations of industry when they come and recruit our students we also encourage leaders from industry to come and participate in guest lectures either in general on general subjects or as a part of former curriculum of the supply chain program so we get many such guest speakers to come and address our students we encourage all our partner organizations to offer us supply chain projects which our students work on as a part of the program so the one of the major responsibilities of the center is to facilitate this interaction in fact we are also setting up various infrastructure in the institute with the help of our corporate partners we are in the process of setting up a supply chain laboratory where our partner uh, corporate partners helping us set up this infra so there again the center plays a very active role so like i said with regard to the program the center's role is to facilitate interaction with industry in addition to that of course there are various other areas where the center wants to be involved in it wants to be involved in doing meaningful research in supply chain so research that will be useful for the corporate world we want to get into case writing and you know set ourselves comparable to harvard business school when it comes to having a repository of cases which we could then share with partner uh, with other management schools in mumbai so the various areas where the center is focusing on and there are very exciting times as we move forward dipana can we go to the next slide please now uh, we thought best that who better than to have a uh, members of senior members of industry from supply chain to guide us in this journey of the center so we have an advisory board from the slide you see that this advisory board is represented by some very very senior and very you know known people in the supply chain space not only uh, the people but if you look at the companies they represent they represent a wide cross section of industries which are working, working on various aspects of the supply chain space we have represent from manufacturing from consulting from it application development from hardcore logistics companies from a shipping company so this advisory board is very actively involved with the center in helping us in various aspects of the supply chain world one part is of course the program they help us in you know guiding us as to what the program should look like how do we enrich the the content of the program so our students are more or better equipped to occupy senior positions when they go into industry so we have an advisory board this advisory board meets twice in a year and uh, we are very lucky in that all the members are of the advisory board are heavily invested with the institute and they are more than willing to contribute their time to various aspects of the institute and the supply chain program center in, in uh, specific uh, next slide please so like i said this is uh, the vision and mission of the uh, the center how do we foster greater alliance with industry what are the various facets of industry involvement that could be brought into our program yeah next slide please so this is a broad list of companies where our alumni are working again some very well known names in this they represent a cross section of industry there are very exciting times ahead for the supply chain professionals uh india is being looked at as a hub a supply chain hub so there are opportunities galore for you people uh, to explore and to find a place where you want to build your career 
Next. The last year was a very exciting year in that we possibly got the greatest variety of roles from industry. It may be, of course, partly due to the fact that we had a bigger batch, but previous years, a lot of uh, uh, our roles were in consulting companies or IT application development companies. But last year, we got a variety of roles, uh, product management roles, analytic roles, typical consulting and IT uh, uh, application development roles. Those were, of course, there. But in terms of variety, last year was very exciting. And our students were able to get a host of positions which would interest them. And uh, we hope that the current year also we'll be able to attract similar opportunities for our students. Next, please. Right. Uh, like Raji said that we want this to be a transformational journey for our students. And who better to tell you about the, this experience than a student from the current batch. So Deepanita will tell us, will tell all of you about what her experience has been in this program. Deepanita, over to you. Yeah, thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity so that I can explain the interested participants how I am benefiting from this program. So we are only into the five months of this program, but I can assure you, I can already feel the transformation in me. And that is because of the unique structure of this program. So as you can see, we for the industry preparation, we have one-to-one -one resume preparation where we have we are allocated mentors who will guide us how resume should be prepared for the roles we are targeting. There is one-on-one -on -one interview preparation as well given for all the roles we are targeting. Along with that, we have uh, on a regular basis, we have sessions from industry leaders who come to our campus and most of them are our recruiters as well. They explain to us the current trends in the industry as well as what they're expecting from us as the new joinees in the industry. Along with that, we have uh, live projects as already mentioned by professors, where we learn what is currently going in the industry. And these live projects are very helpful as they give us direct exposure to what we will be doing in the coming year. Apart from that, we have world-class faculty, which is really great because our professors really provide us a lot of time. They are there to help us, guide us through whatever queries we have. We even have tutorials assigned, which are separate from the classes, which help us through doubt clearing sessions if we have any. All in all, I can see, I can say that even though I don't come from a core supply chain management background, but yet I have learned, I can assure you that I'm learning at a very faster rate. And that is also because we have dedicated courses for supply chain, like operations management, operations research, live projects, simulation. We also have class simulations, which give us a, a very real experience of the kind of problems we'll be dealing in the industry. So for me, I have, I'm definitely benefiting a lot from this transformational journey. Uh, okay, sir, uh, that's from my end. I would like to hand it back to Professor Chandrasekhar to take it forward. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this was uh, the placement record for the last year. Of course, 100% placement was achieved. And uh, last year, we were very, very lucky to uh, finish the placement of the entire batch. And like I said, it was a larger size, but we were able to manage it uh, much before our communication. Uh, but that's not necessarily our control. So I would not, I would like to add a rider here. It's not something which we are guaranteeing year on year. This is something which happened last year. There could be a variety of reasons. There was pent up demand in industry because of the pandemic in the previous year which could have resulted in more positions opening up, more companies interested in our program. But we are hopeful that because of the nature of the program and because its supply chain is such a hot topic now uh, in India, we are pretty confident that we will continue to place our students uh, in good roles and in good organizations. So uh, some of the companies which participate in our placement is given there. Like we said, it uh, represents a pretty wide cross-section of business. Next. These were the live projects. These projects are typically a four months duration where you'll be working in a team of uh, two or three people, uh, a minimum of two, a maximum of three. And the idea is to help you 
apply the theory which has been taught to you in the classroom. So you will be working, of course, the project, uh, you will continue to be on campus because the course will continue concurrently, but you will be working with organizations on live issues which they are facing. You will be part of a team which is working from within the organization on these projects. And to that extent, it is absolutely real-time experience that you'll be getting. In terms of the value which you get, this is possibly the most critical part of our uh, uh, course, which will enhance greatly the value which you got from the theoretical inputs. Most of the people, uh, corporates who recruit from our course are also involved in the projects. And of course, many other companies, again, uh, representing a wide cross-section. It could be typical operational projects. It could be some kind of political alignment. It could be even something like uh, optimizing inventory of uh, in warehouse operations. Uh, multimodal transport, there are various op uh, opportunities available which can be uh, uh, lived through these live projects. Yeah, next. Uh, I now give it back to uh, to Professor Rajesh, who will take you through the rest of the presentation. Hey, Rajesh. Right, so thank you very much for your patience as you go through this presentation. This is the last slide. So as you consider you know, why should I apply into the GSCM program? Next slide, please. Uh, can you put all of them, Dipanita? So we believe it's a unique program offered by IIM Udaipur where we are able to blend the core management fundamentals with the domain of supply chain with uh, in a manner that it becomes a very holistic, useful program where we bring the real life to the classroom. At the end of the program, you get an MBA degree in global supply chain management. And this program is heavily, heavily industry oriented in its design, it's in delivery and in project, all these aspects put together, we are able to bring real life to the classroom so that when you go to the industry, you are ready to you know, do well and succeed. Next slide, please. And I am Udaipur is a premier institution, as I mentioned, as you can see, that we are you know, globally recognized by Financial Times, QS World University ranking, as well as AACSB accreditation. So I would like to say at the, la in the, at the end, this one, I would urge you to think through all this. And if you think global supply chain is something that interests you, something that fascinates you, then perhaps this is the program for you. But I hope you make a good decision for yourself. Ultimately, you have to take a decision and if it makes sense, then you should perhaps consider applying in this program. Next slide, please. So here is that, you know, while we will be answering your questions through this webinar, but if there is some question that remains unanswered, please take a screenshot of this slide so that you can write to us at mbascm admission at the rate imu.ac.in or call us at the numbers that are given during office hours, right? So thank you very much. And now I would encourage you to post your questions in the Q&A section only, not in the chat section. And I would encourage you to not repeat lots of questions on the minimum cutoff, because as I had said that we do not have a minimum cutoff in mind. So over to you, Dipanita, to take us through the uh, Q&A section. You can read out the questions by with their with their names and their questions. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, so I'll just leave the slide here so that the participants can note down the email ID number or they can take a screenshot. And meanwhile, all the participants, please send us your questions in the Q and A section only, not in the chat section, so that we can answer your queries. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So the first question is from Rahul Mehta. I am having 5.5 years of experience in business development and e-commerce. I'm working in Amazon for Kolkata operations for last 3.2 years. I have done my PGDM in marketing and BCom. Owing to work obligations, I just have a valid GMAT score. Would you accept my candidature? So let me answer this. You, you have over three years of experience and you have a GMAT score and you have a three years of university qualification. So I understand that makes you eligible to apply. I don't see any reason why should you not accept your application. 
So you are encouraged to apply and I think you fulfill all the criteria. Am, that, am I right, Tanu? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Vabhav Saha. I have a five months break in my total work experience. So uh, I think he wants to know whether he can apply with the five months break or not. Anu, can you answer that? Uh, yes, uh, he can apply. Means as per the criteria, we require 36 months of work experience. So if he is having a break, but overall, is, if he is having a 36 month of experience, he can apply for the program. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is again from the same participant, Vaibhav Shah. Do 36 months of required work experience needed to be need to be continuous? Pretty answered. There's no need, Vaibhav, to be continuous. A break is fine. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Prem Chand Samant Roy. Hello, sir. I have two questions. What about the international immersion program of GSCM? And the second question is, can you tell the last year average CAT and GMAT score? So let me answer that. So initially when IIM Udaipur started the program, it was in collaboration with Purdue University. That was a different program. For the past three years, we are offering a program where IIM Udaipur delivers the program completely by itself. And we do not have an international immersion in component in our program. We had evaluated about the usefulness of the international immersion. And in the judgment of the committee, we thought that you know, the value add of the participants spending more time on live projects and things of that kind is more important than traveling abroad for an international immersion. So from that consideration, we, have, we do not have an international immersion in the program. As far as the GMAT or CAT scores are concerned, I can imagine the participants constantly thinking about it, but my request to you would be this, that if you think this is the program that attracts you, that aligns with your career goals, without overthinking about what is the good score to apply, you should go ahead and apply and leave the decision to the committee to decide whether you, know, you, you make it or you don't. So that would be my request to all candidates. Thank you, sir, for answering the question. And now we, the next question is from an anonymous attendee. Sir, from an entrepreneur's perspective, what would be the benefits of studying the GSCM course rather than the MBA? What opportunities does the program provide specifically for entrepreneurs? Chandrasekhar would like to answer that. Yeah, uh, now, like we said, you know, this program is structured in such a way that in addition to awareness of general business management practices, we all we dwell on supply chain management. Now, as an entrepreneur, knowledge of supply chain and how to manage your supply chain will be of critical importance. So to that extent, yes, this course will give you that perspective as an entrepreneur, because like I said, supply chain is very critical to you. But with regard to whether there's anything specifically in the program for entrepreneurs, no, uh, it's a program where entrepreneurs also will benefit in their own way, but there is nothing specifically which we address for potential or future entrepreneurs. Sir, I would just like to add one more point to that answer that uh, even though the program is focused on supply chain, we have other courses. Like we have a course on entrepreneurship taught to us. We have courses on marketing, also on B2B marketing. We also have courses on strategy and finance. So in a nutshell, this uh, these courses will also help you to groom you as an entrepreneur. Plus, we have a lot of clubs and committees in the college, which also help you to get your idea across the, you know, the, the board. We also have an incubation center in IMU. So all in all, the college will provide you a great platform to start yes. something. Uh, okay, sir. The next question is from Anup Kumar. When is the admission process starting? So the admission process is already started from 18th of July. And you can see on the website, the details are on the website regarding the uh, admission process and different cycles we are taking admission in. Anup, if you are interested in applying, you can go ahead and apply anytime now onwards. So thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Ajay. Can we reapply in the second round or further rounds? Uh, 
here i would like to mention like it uh, depends like if you means apply in the first round and uh, the application uh, means uh, cancel or rejected at the initially so you can apply with your uh, revised uh, score or revised uh, profile but if you've been interviewed and you were not offered admission then i don't think so that it is a it is useful to apply in a second round again what it means is that if you have been able to improve your score or you think that a score was the reason that you were not called for the interview and your score improves you you are welcome to apply but once you have been already been interviewed and you are not selected then you cannot apply in the second round or, or next round thank you sir the next question is from from smruti when is the tentative date for pi will it be virtual or in person Uh, regarding the tentative dates like we have given a tentative deadline for uh, application ending and the announcement of a result on the website so the interview will take place within the time frame before announcing of a result so mostly within uh, the uh, within uh, first or second week of after closing the application the interview will be happen and the interview shall happen online not in online virtual okay Uh, the next question is from Adwait Diwar. Is three year working experience compulsory for MBA? I have done my one year internship in DBA at a shipping agency. So the internship at the time of your graduation will not be countable because uh, means uh, we need a three years of work experience after your graduation. You have to wait. Uh... Advice for one more year. You have to gain one more years of experience before you can apply in this program. Uh, at this point, I would like to uh, request the participants to please post their questions in the Q and A section only, not in the chat section, so that we can answer your queries. So now we move to the next question, which is from Pratik Ayare. How are months of experience calculated? Number of days divided by what? Thirty or thirty-one? actually it uh, means uh, mostly is divided by 30 and it's countable according to number of months you work so we count as 30 days uh, complete uh, for a month in case pratik you have a doubt you can mention you can share your ex exact experience through an email and admission officer will be very happy to clarify whether you are eligible or not Okay. The next question is from Anup Kumar. What is the interview call ratio? Uh, I would like to answer this, uh, Anup. We do not have a specific number in mind. As I said, you know, you can imagine that the kind of applications we get in a particular round is variable. You know, we can get very high quality application. We may not get high quality applications. So there is, as I said, there's no point overly worrying about all this data. If I were in your place. the way i would look at it is this that if i have a score valid score of gmat gre and cat and i think this program is of interest to me i would just go ahead and apply and not worry overly about the you know these ratios or cutoffs or things of that kind because this this is not going to help you and no but nowhere this is available right so yeah go ahead thank you sir the next question is from anubhav tiwari good morning good morning anubhav can we join this program with more than 7 year of experience in scm is there any limit on experience uh, can you secretly like to answer this yeah actually there is uh, no upper limit for experience but there are certain challenges when it comes to uh, which come when we have people with more than let's say 8 years of experience we have found that from a placement perspective the sweet spot is about 3 to 8 years of experience beyond that it becomes very difficult for us to place the candidates so you would have to factor that into your decision right uh, the companies which come to our campus for placement prefer candidates in that experience range uh, so that they are more adaptable to uh, the new organization and we find it a bigger challenge when it comes to candidates with more than 8 years of experience but 7 years in scm yes should not be an issue So we encourage you to apply. We take the next question from Rahul Mehta. Will be obliged if you could guide us through application portal. 
and process at the end of this seminar. Uh, Rahul, I suggest you, you can contact the admission office if you're facing any problem regarding the application okay. portal or uh, you can write us a mail. We will guide you with the application portal. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is from Kanishak Sharma. I'm applying this year while filling the application. It takes by default number of months of experience till March 2023. I have current work experience of 50 months, but the system takes work experience of 56 months. What will happen if I don't complete the work experience of 56 months, since it will be written in my application? Uh, so the uh, so the system take the work experience according to it is uh, been designed. But anyways, we will verify the document uh, before the application process, and we will verify your. Uh, documents. Even if you don't complete the 56 month of experience, anyways, you are having more than 36 of month experience, which is required for the application process. Absolutely. So not pose any problem, Kanishak, because you already have, you know, 50 months of experience while we need only 36. So you don't have to worry about it. So go ahead and apply. Okay. The next question is from an anonymous attendee. I have experience of four years in supply chain procurement role in manufacturing sector. Could you please throw some light if any prerequisite required for interview and curriculum for this program? Uh, I'll take that. Now, experience in supply chain itself is not a prerequisite for this program, right? So there is nothing specific where you need to prepare or need, you know, uh, any prerequisite for applying. And then subsequently, if you're shortlisted for attending the interview. So you are absolutely uh, eligible from the statement that you made. I think you should be eligible and you can go ahead and apply and not worry about any prerequisite. Yeah, sir. I would also like to add my own point because uh, even I have experience of five years in IT sector and even I didn't have an experience in supply chain. But after joining this course, I can assure you that the course is designed in a way that you would be exposed to all the supply chain concepts, projects, whatever is required and you would be ready for the interviews when the companies arrive. So you don't need to have a prerequisite in supply chain uh, industry, though it is good if you have, but it is not a prerequisite. As I've already explained that I, I can learn, I am learning a lot in, in supply chain domain, even without having a prior experience. So it is not a, a blockage for you, I can assure you that. Okay, uh, the next question is from uh, Chandan Krishnamurti. I'm having 12 plus, 12 plus experience in new product development, engineering and procurement. Will I be a strong candidate considering that I have more experience than the average? Is it a matter of concern? Again, I'll take that. Chandan, as you have said, 12 years of experience. Yes, it is a matter of concern from a placement perspective. It gets very difficult for us to place candidates who have more than eight years of experience. Till eight years, we are relatively comfortable. But having said that, there is an option available to you to investigate a potential sabbatical organization uh, option from your organization. That is an option you can take where you can come, come on a sabbatical uh, from your current organization with your experience. I'm sure the program will enrich you in many, many ways. But uh, if you're going to be making yourself uh, available for placement, then it is a matter of concern. So if I could just add a little bit more. So what that means, Chandan, is this that if you are still interested in attending this program, you are welcome to apply, but you can apply only as a candidate under the sabbatical category. What that means is that we shall not be able to offer you any placement opportunity and you shall have to go back to your own organization. And that's the decision you have to make, whether that's something that attracts you or not. But if you have any more residual doubts after this, you're very welcome to write to us on the email ID that was provided to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we move to the next question from Rahul Mehta. Once you were also having alliance with Purdue University, is there anything currently as such? Do we have international immersion? No, our alliance with Purdue University is not uh, there now. The course is being run entirely out of Udaipur. And Professor Rajesh has already answered the, the uh, point with regard to international immersion. There is no component in the program in its current form. Thank you, sir. 
the next question is for from smruti is there any added advantage advantage for an individual having engineering background as the percentage of students enrolled for this program previously are mainly having engineering background let me answer this so as far as the program requirement is concerned we do not have any specific requirement right all we are looking forward are people with a graduate three years of university qualification now it so happens that uh, you know many candidates come from engineering background but as far as the institute is concerned we encourage anybody with any discipline to apply into the program so long as you are interested in supply chain management as a domain right so engineering is not a prerequisite if you have an engineering background and uh, you know so you are of course very welcome to apply and certainly you know because as an engineer it might benefit you in certain subjects not in others so that's the nature of things but it's not a requirement from iim udaipur side that the candidates have any particular background in any particular discipline all that matters is your interest in supply chain management then uh, yeah that's all i think yeah thank you sir uh, the next question is from vaibha what is the ratio of typical manufacturing companies coming in campus okay i'll take that the ratio is much lower than what we would want it to be right but there again have you know, what i would like to add here is that our placement is largely driven by students we have a student placement committee of course which is being supported by uh, the uh, institute's placement committee but the placement process is by and large driven by students in that they influence to a large extent the nature of companies which come onto the campus and this is driven by the interest shown by students and we find that not many students are interested in going back to manufacturing for a variety of reasons right i'm not going to the reasons at this stage which is why the number of manufacturing companies which come on campus is lesser than what they should be uh, like i said it's purely driven by the interest shown by uh, our students in the type of roles they want to get into thank you sir uh, we move to the next question from smruti can i prepare interview for i am udaipur as well as i am ahmedabad if i get selected in both do i have a choice to decide if i get rejected in pi round in one of them will i be still eligible for the other let me answer that so while there are 20 iims in the country each iim is autonomous and independent so your application at iim ahmedabad has no implication at your application at iim udaipur we we will not be interested in knowing what is happening there we are not we can't find out we don't want to find out so that's your decision that in how many places you apply independently and decision at one place will have no implication at your decision at other place right so you could go ahead and apply in as many places as you think is you know right for you right and that will not impact your admission process anywhere else thank you sir uh, the next question is from an anonymous attendee i am a software engineer and i am interested in international business can you also give some interview tips i'm glad you're anonymous i'm sure this is not the platform to be talking about interview tips i don't know how to answer your question frankly uh okay sir uh, the next question is again from an anonymous attendee are there any international placement opportunities that the program offers okay now uh, we have not been able to get international companies to come on to campus but we have indian companies which have international operations which have recruited from this program and some of the roles that have been offered required the students to be placed outside india so that is something which uh, we had uh, some opportunities last year which i'm sure will uh, be this year also and we hope to increase it as we go along but these are typically indian companies which have operations internationally yeah uh thank you sir the next question is from advet divar sir can you please explain about the fee structure for mba at iim udaipur let me answer that the total fee of 22.6 lakh advet that you shall have to pay if you are offered an admission into the program you will have around 2 weeks of time within which you shall have to pay a commitment fee of 1 lakh which is non refundable then subsequently 
within a certain time frame, you have to pay the first installment of 7 lakh and the total fee is 22.6 lakh of which 30,000 is a refundable once you finish the program. I'm also happy to mention that we have a tie up with State Bank of India and uh, the details are available on the website of IIM Udaipur and they are happy to process your applications. Uh, if you are offered an admission, they are happy to provide you with a you know, scholar loan. I'm sure there are many other banks also which are happy to provide you a loan in case you need one, but uh, we have a quick processing with uh, because of the tie-up arrangements with uh, State Bank of India Udaipur branch. Thank you, sir. We we'll move to the next question from Venkat Raman. The application being accepted for five cycle, is there any minimum candidate limit to be accepted in each cycle? There is no such minimum candidate limit or maximum candidate limit in each cycle. I would say like this, that if you are a candidate, if you are interested and if you have a valid score, or as soon as you have a valid score, you should go ahead and apply without worrying about your chances in earlier rounds versus your chances in later rounds. Nobody knows, even we don't know. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Rohin Mathur. I have seven years of experience in core engineering plus business development in engineering service company. Since my experience is on the higher side, would there be any issue while placement? What are the reasons companies do not prefer high experience? I'll take that. Uh, like we've been saying, till about eight years of experience, we are reasonably comfortable. Right? So seven years in engineering business development, uh, should not be a major problem. But, you know, you've asked for the reasons why companies do not prefer high, higher experience. You know, when you come with, you know, many years of experience, you have certain expectations in terms of the level at which you would like to be placed. Now, this may disturb the internal dynamics of organizations, right? So, fitment is one of the reasons why uh, companies do not prefer candidates with many years of experience. The other thing is, with greater experience, you come with certain ways of working, we come with certain ideas of, of the way to work, and it becomes difficult for a much experienced person to adapt to a new organization. So another reason why companies prefer is that they find it easier to get you know, candidates with lesser experience to fit into the organization to settle in much faster than people with greater experience. These are the two basic reasons why companies uh, avoid people with uh, high experience, but seven years, should be okay. I don't anticipate any major issues. Uh, sir, I, I also want to add something that along with the interview preparation coaching, one-to-one -one executive coaching, and uh, along with that, we also have a very helpful alumni network. And we also have one-on-one -on -one mentorship with uh, one of the alumni who has already passed out from college and they are in a good position in the industry right now. So even our alumni also helps us a lot in understanding you know the industry requirement and getting placement so it's not that it's only us and the college but even uh, the alumni is great of i'm uh, okay sir uh, we move to the next question it is from uh, sukiran day i'll be appearing for cat in november 2022 will i be able to apply with the cat 2022 scorecard in january 2023 i know if you can answer that uh, yes, definitely you can uh, apply with your uh, CAT score as the applications is open till February. So once you received your CAT score, you can apply with uh, in, in the cycle. So tentatively that time will be in having at uh, cycle four. So you can apply in cycle four. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next question is from Anup Kumar. Sir, what is the median and highest package for last year? One thing before I answer this, I would urge you to look at our website where all these details which have been audited are available. But okay, from memory, I can say that I think the median was around 19.75 and the highest was around the 35. But like I said, absolute accurate figures you be are available on the website. I would urge you to go and look at those figures. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Vaibhav Shah. Do there are companies which hires via lateral hiring process for mid-level roles in this program? Yes. Uh, many companies do look at uh, supply chain students as lateral hires, and uh, they have a process which is uh, different from a typical campus hiring process. But yeah, I lateral hiring is an option. 
that not all companies do that. Not, there yeah. are certain companies who come to the campus looking at everybody as a fresh graduate. Some companies do look at the supply chain graduates as a lateral hiring. So it's a mixed bag. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next questions are uh, from anonymous attendee. So what is the batch profile of the current batch? In what terms are you talking about in terms of educational background, in terms of experience, in terms of gender, you know, the various ways at which the profile could be looked at. But engineering, predominantly we get engineers because only engineers, you know, the large number of applicants are from the uh, engineering fraternity, right? Experience, a pretty mixed bag in terms of there are people from uh, automobile industry, there are people from the IT sector, the people from shipping. We have a, a, a diverse uh, batch. There are officers from the Navy who are a part of the program. So it's a very diverse batch, which adds to the enrichment uh, the students get from the program. Gender, predominantly male. Uh, Dipanita will possibly be one of the few uh, of the batch of about 49. I think there were five or six, Dipanita. Yeah, sir, five of us in the current batch. Yeah. Uh, but sir, about the batch profile, we are actually quite fortunate to share our batch with four of the Navy, candid uh, Navy uh, candidates. And they actually add a lot of expertise and experience to our batch. And that is a great experience because we are also learning from them and they are also learning from us. Uh, and uh, okay, so, so the next question, uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. The session was really helpful and has provided necessary insight into the program. You're welcome. Uh, the last question uh, is, I have October 21 GMAT score. Is it sufficient or do I have to give again? Definitely your GMAT score is valid as the GMAT score is valid for five years. So you can apply with this GMAT score. Yes. So there's no need to appear again with the current score. You are very welcome to apply. All right. So it seems like we have come to an end of the Q&A section. I would like to thank all of you on behalf of IIM Udaipur for being present this morning to attend this webinar. And I hope the webinar session was helpful for you to clarify the doubts that you had in your mind and also get a brief overview of the program. What's most important is that you have your career aspiration and career goals. And if, if your career goals and aspirations align with what we offer, then we believe that uh, you know, it will be helpful for you to apply in this program. Whatever it is, I hope you take the best decision for yourself. Wishing you well and have a good day and happy Independence Day to all of you. And thank you, thank my you all. Happy Independence Day to all. You all. I would like to thank all the participants and I would like to thank Professor Rajesh Agrawal, Professor Chandrasekhar and Tanu Bhatt ma'am for attending the webinar today with us. And I would urge all the interested students to please email back to us in case you still have queries. This program is great. Being a current student, I can assure you that you will learn a lot from here. And it will help you in future in many ways, not only in your grades and placements, but it will change you maybe as a person. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you to all. Thank you, Dibhita. Bye. Bye. Bye.